Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Commander Clash podcast, where we talk all things Commander. And today, we are going to the smallest hill I'm <laughs> dying on. <laughs> We're going to find some largely like irrelevant in the in the you know in the grand scheme of things doesn't really matter. <laughs> but we are super passionate about, and we will fight you to the death. So get ready, comments. It's going to be a spicy <laughs> one. Uh, join with me today, uh, Sassy <laughs> Olive. Are you ready? <laughs> I am ready. I have some very small hot takes to uh, to bring up today, so it should be fun. Uh, Krim, the Asian Avenger, you never have a hot take. What are you going to do this week? <laughs> I don't know. I'm just fresh out. Uh, I'll have to dig real deep because uh, the problem is everything that I, I care about is not a small hill. I don't understand. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, die <on> <laughs> I'll die on that hill. Yeah. <laughs> Tober, Budget Commander, how are you doing? I feel like all my opinions are right, so therefore there are no hot takes. There are only the correct takes. Yeah, only correct takes yes. on the podcast. <laughs> I am the Codfather, Richard. And of course, all my takes are also correct and not spicy whatsoever. Uh, and we'll be going through the smallest hill we're willing to die on. We're going to make, what's the expression? We're going to make mountains out of molehills. Hey, there we go. Yeah, that's, that's, that's... Expression. that's like too old time <laughs> for me. I don't know the expression. Uh, but we're going to do that. Yes. But before we do that. We have a sponsor. Today's show is brought to you by Card Conduit, the easiest way to sell your magic cards. Card Conduit lets you skip all the typing, time, and work associated with buy listing. And their curated service lets you send in as many cards as you want with buy list value of $1 or more, and you pay just a 5% service fee. You can use their sorted service where you list and sort your cards and pay only 2%. You get a detailed report and fast payment once your order is processed. You can get 10% off by heading over to cardconduit.com slash mtggoldfish. So thank you, Card Conduit. Uh, so I will kick things off with my first uh, a mole hill, so to speak. So, uh, you know, I, I love trashing 60 card players <laughs> and like old holdovers from 60 card uh, into 100 cards. And one thing I feel and I think I, I, I think Seth and Phil are about to die here <laughs> and Krim will love this. But everyone should be playing mismatched lands. No. So when, when you have like 10 <laughs> basics. People are like, oh, let me put 10 of the same basic in. That is so boring. Oh. And we used to do that in 60 cards. So if you get thought seized yeah. or something, right, you can hide information by not playing. You know, like if you draw a different art land and you play it, they'll be like, oh, that's a different basic plane than the one I saw in your hand. So I knew you drop a few planes for the turn. And you're all sweaty and like trying to eke out that 1%. I'm not even sure that even matters in 60 card. But there's like no need for this 100 cards. There are so many cool lands uh, in in Commander today, and you can express yourself with these lands. The lands are the easiest part to bling out. Like, if you want to bling out, I don't know, like your, your mana crypt, that costs a lot of money. If you want to bling out your basic lands, you can do that on the cheap. So everyone should be playing mismatched lands. If I see, like, 20 basics from Tomer and they're all the same basic, like, oh, that's, like, disgusting, Tomer. Show some originality. No. <laughs> God. Oh. Yes. This oh. is the hottest take. This has to be the hottest Even better thing. if it's white border. Even no, better if it's white no, border. No, get out of here. Richard, Richard, you get it. it you get it. I'll, he understands. I'll especially. give you. Especially. Oh. I'll give you that it's, it's the hottest take that I've ever heard. That is the hottest small you, take I've ever you heard. You really play match it, lands? Yes! It's uh, the static. You have to match the yeah, static. Exactly. To the Why do you have it's to match the static? Yeah. What, if, so if I'm playing a Theros god, I'm going to pick the Theros full art lands. I'm not going to have just like one Theros full art land. And like but what if one you just chose stupid... four different Theros based no. on the same set to no, get the because, full Theros experience? It looks pretty when it's all a uniform on my board. You know, It has to look aesthetic. Aesthetically yeah. pleasing and throwing a bunch of mismatched basics together is awful. It ruins everything. <laughs> I might as well. Yeah, I might as well does concede. it though? Yeah. It's does not it a, though? Yes. It's does not about it win though? percentage. It's about having a little self respect and making your board look presentable. <laughs> like you yes. are gonna say, you want to have a pretty deck and you want to have the matching lands to go with it. I was trying to think about this, like. Unless you can argue there's some troll value where, like, you tilt your opponents by your lands looking so horrible and mismatch, maybe I could get behind that if that was the take. But I don't think that is. Why? Why? Like, if you want to show off all these cool basic lands, just build another deck. You can play different yeah. lands in each deck. That works. You don't have to have 20 different planes in the same <laughs> we deck. Have 20 different decks. Do you, it's like, do you wear, it's do you wear like, mismatched socks, Richard? Like, does this apply to the rest of your life as well? Like, 
Socks? Crib, let me see like, your socks. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay. He's not even wearing socks. <laughs> look at it. Look at it. Look at that. Sir. Okay, this fair. Is where I'm at. Crim, like, this crim, is where crim, I'm at, dude. This is like, that backfired. Crim this gets is a like, pass. If you go on a first <laughs> date, and instead of wearing something nice, like you look, you wear like your nicest sweater or your nicest shirt or whatever, and you look presentable, you're like, nah, I'm going to wear like the t-shirt that I sleep in every single day and has like drool marks. That's on not it, the same. It's like, yeah, no, no, you no, no, can no, do that. No, no. You can do that. You go that. to first dates over, you wear your good socks. You're like, that guy could afford one good pair of socks. <laughs> Kim goes on a first date, he has two <laughs> good <laughs> socks on <laughs> different sets. They're like, whoa, this guy is killing it. This guy, this guy is Mr. <laughs> Money Bags. He bought the one on one ring. He has two pairs of good I socks. Mean, of course, Kurt's going to agree with this. His hair is blue and black, right? <laughs> yeah, he couldn't even pick a color. I mean, I, I feel like I don't have to say much other than that, yo, magic is a deep game, right? We have a lot of history. So why not celebrate all the sweet arts that exist? That's right. You don't, you don't, it, that, that's how you know it's like, ah, yes, a cultured, a cultured uh, human being has entered the chat. And that is what it's all about right there. I, I think that I, I, Richard, I think back when we played at F and M's and played against each other, first time I met Richard, even in sixty card formats, I did it. I didn't even care if there was a percentage. <laughs> like, like, that, like that was disgusting. <laughs> that, yeah. that's how I beat Crib with that point zero one percent. I I sure you knew, right? Like, <laughs> you can play that mini game of memorizing which land I got. It doesn't matter to me because I'm just gonna do this because I love all the different. Arts. I, I, you know, you know when you thought see someone and then. It's F and M, and they refuse to play it. Their hand down, so like, okay, I guess I'll write it. And then you yeah. gotta actually write like Forest Mirrodin. <laughs> how, how, how does that matter? You get that in there. How does that matter in pro play? You get though? that in there. How does that matter in pro play though? Like, okay, if I have multiple forests in my hand, and you see that I have like a Mirrodin one or whatever, you just play the Mirrodin one first, right? Like it's basic. Yeah. Th that's if well, the other person is playing tight, and they know to play that one. Oh, you're playing right? competitive. But, play tight. But they, they can accidentally play it. the wrong one. It's actually happened like maybe <laughs> twice in Ugh. my entire life and was I, it even uh, relevant to the game uh, at all i don't i'm not sure gross I, I don't even think i've seen like i don't think in any point in my life i've played matching <laughs> i play four different bolts in modern i played four different Ugh. path to exiles Ugh. i Why and, not and, pro tour champion crim you, not, not <laughs> champion, but you missed, you missed out look but if, if i play it if I play white border, I'm fine with white border lands, but I'm gonna play matching white border lands. All right, I'm not an animal. Nah. The okay, miss wait. So do you guys rotate your lands? Like you have a deck, it has like 15 matching basics. Are those basics in that deck forever, or like every week at F and M, you swap out those 15? Oh, no, for no. Another one. Well, on Moda, it's Sap super easy. But in paper, basics? no. Oh, geez, Why would that's I ever way play too much 15 work. basics? Well, this is for Tomer, the every, only person that plays 15 every basics. Every deck has its own matching basics, and they match the aesthetic of the deck. Wow. So that's so. Why does he Tomer's that's basic so collection? Tomer it's like 50 of each basic. Yeah. Yeah, well, like <laughs> yeah. my Theros, my Theros <laughs> ones has the full out Theros lands. If I'm my Zedru one is like it's just guy and it's chill, so I have pastel colors from Urza Saga, uh, the Urza Saga lands. Um, my mirrored it, my my equipment that Cauldron one is all like sci fi futuristic lands. Like they all have to match for the theme. When I had a zombie deck, it was like the zombie lands from Innistrad. I. I will say, like, I mismatch lands is kind of okay. Mismatch borders, though, like, physically hurts me. Like, if you got the white border on the black border on the old border on the new border, like, oh, it, like, it makes me cringe when I see that. It's, like, actually physically painful. This has to be the hottest thing I've ever heard in my life. As, when they have, like, random borders, not <laughs> even any border that you can recognize. Do you just not play with any secret layers? You gotta, you gotta buy 30 of the secret layers for $1,500 so you can bling out your commander deck. That's, that's the way I Y'all are, going, you all are taking this, this out a loan to match your mana base. <laughs> yep. I don't gotta. I just gotta get my one. <laughs> Dude. It, it's so liberating. So you go you go to like a magic fest, you get a promo mountain, you're like awesome. Yeah. Stick it in the You don't deck. have to be like, oh, I gotta get 19 more of these <laughs> to make sure it matches, right? You're like, ah, you know, whatever, put it in. Right? You know, oh, no new Lord of the Rings land, put it in. <laughs> I broke my rule a single time. It's uh, my Tashiro deck has all new uh, full art uh, swamps from the Neon Kamigawa, obviously. Uh, but I have one land that was gifted to me. It was an Apex Swamp. And it's my favorite Ooh. basic land in the entire game. Uh, but they're like $50 to get. 
each and you can't buy them anywhere. There's not in stock. But somebody, a fan sent it to me and I was like, you know what? If I could make it all a pack, I would. But because I have one and it was gifted to me, I put the one in there. So I have just like 25 of the regular swamps from Neon Kamigawa and then the one A pack. That's my only only time I broke the rule. Otherwise, it's always matching. Always matching. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to play like donate cards and I'm going to play a white border swamp. I'm going to donate it to you. I'm going to get seed. <laughs> I, just... I'll get seed. <laughs> I don't want to touch my swamp. Just, 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 just. I'll put it what, to the what, side. Once you realize the power. <laughs> All right, Krim, hit us up with a a a hot irrelevant take. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I don't know why you keep saying irrelevant, but I'll 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 try. I'll try. This is this is still very relevant. Um okay. So the one thing I it's funny that you mentioned a lot about like, you know, the lands, the mix and matched art and stuff like that. So the reason why that's relevant to me is cuz the next part I want to talk about the art and magic. I think that the art and magic is amazing. I love that we we have all these different artworks, but I think we, you know what we don't have enough of anime art. I think that there needs to be more anime arts in magic. Why don't you play a different card game? No, I want to play magic like and I want it to have anime in it. I think that it's it's the beauty. like I, I really like how just anime art and all. That's it. I'm not even just going to keep it to just anime art. I'm also going to keep it to weird artwork. I'm talking like so in 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 One Piece, right? And in Pokemon, mm-hmm. in Yu-Gi-Oh, they have the weirdest artworks. There's like all clay looking cards and I don't know why it exists. They have art like so there's a card like Trafalgar Law, Trafalgar Law and like there's like dittos that are they look like they're actually made with clay and modeled and put together and it's like this real 3D model, right? You have like this Gengar artwork that looks like it was drawn by like like it's a very it captures a very youthful, like almost like a, a, a elementary school style art, right? Like what you would draw and you and then your parents would put on the fridge begrudgingly. And then on top of that, like like the, like Yu-Gi-Oh has Hungry Burger. It's just this weird artwork of an e- like what is essentially an evil burger. So I, I, I think that a lot of magic art is amazing. Don't get me wrong. I have Grinning Demon tattooed on my forearm for a reason. But I'm talking about also, the different styles of artwork. Secret Layer has done that. You saw it with Lord of the Rings. Uh, you see it with all all the, the just the wild artwork across the board, thanks to Secret Layer. Now I just want more anime, uh, more clay looking type, more really bizarre ones, ones that look like they were cro- uh, croquetted. I don't know cro- crochet. I don't know how you say it, uh, <laughs> but like they look like they're made with stuffed animals. <laughs> Like, uh, like, like, I, I, mm-hmm. I'm so here for that. I think, can you imagine like a clay Nico Bolas looking goofy as all hell? I think that would be hilarious. And I think it'd be cool. Isn't that how magic is now though? Like we yeah. have like a 50 different versions of every <laughs> single card. Secret layers are always like every single type of art is, is fair game. The Ixalan thing had like showcase frames, but then they also had like the like the other type of when it was like very colorful type versions of stuff too. I don't know. I think they do that. And like I don't they like do, anime, they but it. they do it. Yeah. They do it. I don't but they don't do it enough and not weird enough. It still feel like okay, the Lord of the Rings one where I just don't know what posters. the hell's going on. Yeah, the the post. Is that not weird enough the, for you? <laughs> it that one is not like that's weird. Not art. That that's one, more frame. Right? Yeah, it's like it, it it again. You're looking at the frame of the card. I'm not talking about the border of the card. I'm not talking the Amonkhet treatment. I'm talking about the artwork. Yeah, I'm talking about the actual you know, old school. Artwork. So you want an actual like, remember like stasis? Remember yeah. like back in like Alpha Beta Arabian Nights where they didn't care about sales. They're like, oh, cool art. Shove it on a card. <laughs> And then, yeah. so if you look at the old cards, the art style is like super varied. <laughs> and then if you look at the new cards outside of Secret Layers, it's all pretty like this generic uniform looking feel. So I see what Krim is saying, right. but it's not going to work because <laughs> they're using art to sell cards and they're not going to make like some stupid, like, I don't know, Nickel Bolas burger, right? Like Krim will buy That'd it. That would be, it. That'd be like, the only person who buys it, right? <laughs> so they, they have to balance the fact that people will actually buy it. 
But if you want this weird stuff, like the the old cards, back when Magic was yeah. like a scrub game no one cared about, they're just like, oh, we got some free art or some cheap yeah. art, throw it on there. <laughs> and the the art direction is like everywhere. There is no art direction. And there's a certain charm to that. I, I agree with Krim, but economically, it's going to be tough. I, I imagine they just walked around and were like, hey, do you know how to draw? Do you know how to draw? Like, yeah. do, you, do you want to do some card art in the early days before they had the actual artists? But I mean, I think I understand and I think I agree with the idea that like in the current era are for the main cards at least have kind of started all look the same like the styles all similar it's all very like designed to sell so i do get that it's not like the old days but at the same time i kind of with tomer i think like i don't know if the secret layers and like didn't we just get a pair of socks in the art for some crossover for wing boots where watsi's like yeah how like isn't that far enough that's like the that's essentially a cheeseburger right it's a pair of just like dirty socks that they're trying to <laughs> promo with wait what, what is this dirty socks chart what do you guys it's not it's a dirty socks. it's wing, wing boots, boots it's for, came with a socks yeah, yeah they're pro trying to crossover promo they're trying to yeah. sell socks now, so there's yeah. wing boots with a pair of branded <laughs> I, socks on I them. I mean, yeah. you have like little gear. It's like a, remember little gear? It's yeah. literally oh, just yeah. a rice ball. That, that's yeah. your burger. Well, they that's also, your burger crew. You want, I love it. Thirty anniversary mascot. Little you little want gear. a nickel bolas burger? Well, we had cute to brew. Remember where it's like I it love be that. Like little little yeah. baby anime uh, oh nickel bolas. Yes. Like they do it. Like I don't know. Yeah. No, I'm we down. know that they do it. I'm down. I just want more of it, right? Because like I. Like all the chibi arts are so damn cute. Yeah, go for uh, it. I I love all of that. Like and I love all the like. Okay, I don't love all the anime arts. There's definitely some misses, but that's okay. You throw a, 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 you throw a ton of darts <laughs> every every now and then. A you're few. gonna miss, of course. Yeah, there, there's a few I don't like. A few, but like I, I I think they should just keep doing that. I love that, and I think that you know I, I gotta ask you all a question. This is a uh, this was one that was hotly debated in the community. What did you think of that faithless looting art that was in the Strixhaven Mystical Archives? Not the the uh, I'm talking about just the the regular Mystical Archive, not the uh, Japanese variant. That's good. I like the faithless looting art. I liked it. I know some people didn't like it, but like I think that was an interesting piece of art. I don't think I want a cheeseburger, but that was cool. I, <laughs> but I mean, for for everybody that like you know, for some that's their cheeseburger, right? Sure. And I, I think that that artwork is very interesting. And at first, I was like, this looks weird. It's in, but then it slowly became this acquired taste where I'm like, actually, no, that's kind of cool. Oh, my God. I saw it in person with the, like, the shiny gold but like non-foil, and it just looked beautiful. So I love that artwork now. I think for me, as long as I have options, like you can give me, you're going to make a weird version of every single card. You can give like 50 versions of weird alternate arts, but give me like a regular one that's like vanilla and then I'm happy, you know? And then you could go, you can make every yeah. single card an anime card. I don't care. Like it, it's not for me. Good for you if you like it. But as long as I have a non anime, <laughs> yeah, as long yeah. as I have a non anime option, then I'm fine, right? Like why do I care if there's alternate arts of other stuff? As long as I get something that I like too, you know, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody can be happy. All right. Seth, hit us. <laughs> Oh. Hit us with a hot take. I, I got an easy one. So we're, I know this is a Commander Clash podcast. We're talking about the Commander format. But uh, I think that Commanders are kind of overrated. And it's okay to not care about your Commander. It's okay to not even cast your Commander. I think we get so caught into when we're playing Commander. Like, oh, I got to, like, build my deck around my Commander. How do I maximize my Commander? When it's perfectly fine to just, like, build a cool deck with 100 single tin cards in it and then not even care what your Commander is or throw it in after. I would say, like... Not most of my decks, but many of my commander decks. I actually just build the deck first and then like pick an Atagatag or something to be my commander because I'm just trying to like build a cool magic deck. So I feel like commanders are just like kind of overrated in commander. <laughs> that seems like a wild <laughs> sentence. Commanders are overrated in commander. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you don't need them. I, I agree with Seth. So there's, Yo, there's so much emphasis classical about. Classical symphony is overrated. I wish there was less classical symphony. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's so much emphasis. So a lot of people say if your commander is like two mana, you shouldn't play ramp. And I'm like, what? <laughs> right? Or like if your commander is like, say, four mana, people are like, don't play like explosive vegetation. And. I don't know. People 
love thinking that they should run out their commander on curve oh. and that like their commander somehow never dies. Like if if your whole deck is centered around your commander and your commander dies, like you know, a single mm -hmm. removal spell or sweeper, your deck is dysfunctional if it totally relies on your commander, mm -hmm. right? So there should be aspects of your deck that don't rely on your commander. And hence, it's fine to not care about your commander or cast it on curve or whatever. Yeah. So I see what's that the same. Right? Yeah. And a lot of people I don't know, they have this dream where you just turn four, cast your commander, turn five, win. And I'm like, I yeah, it lives forever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right? Like, you should be fine not having your commander out. And you should be preparing to cast your commander multiple times. Because if you are one of those decks where you win with your commander, everyone knows it. They're going to kill it. <laughs> right? So, like, it's not going to work the way you think it is. So... I agree with Seth. Atog, Atog for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I, Child of Alara for everyone. Yeah. Everything's 5C. You only use like two of the colors. <laughs> yep. And you go at it. <laughs> I, I partially agree with this, but like, so I agree that being overly reliant on your commander is a bad thing. Like, if your entire deck doesn't function without your commander, then uh, you might be sad when it gets interacted with, which is what everybody's going to hopefully be doing to you. But at the same time, I think like, Every deck, every single goal of of any deck you want to build these days usually has a commander at this point. So you might as well take advantage of the fact that you have an, a free card that you have constant access to. So like, I do agree. Like sometimes there's commanders that you know is a two drop, and I know that every single game I'm going to play it on turn two. So I value other two drops less highly. For example, if it's like a ramp or whatever. But like, not necessarily. That means like I needed to like I needed to win or stick around or whatever. Just something to build around. In 2011, though, like when Commander first came out, like this was actually much more the norm because we didn't have a commander for every single archetype. So if you wanted to build like I don't know, I don't like. Fairies. Well, fairies were older too, but if you wanted to build something that didn't have a full thing, like a life gain group pain type style deck, you just pick a random card for the color combination, and that was totally fine. You don't have to always play it. Sometimes you'd play it if you needed like an extra body or whatever you ran out of, of gas. But like that's totally fine, and that's a valid way of, of actually building around. And I think that's also sometimes useful too. If not being reliant on your commander to do its thing means you are more resilient to a, a interaction heavy game. So there, there's merit. Where's, where's my Zubaric commander, Tomer? Where's my Zubaric commander? Not everything has a has a commander. Give yeah. it a year. Give it a year. <laughs> <laughs> Give it another year. I mean, that's that's very true, right? Back then, Sultai was just everyone was Damia, <laughs> or the the yeah, like it is. It was just Damia because you did you didn't even care about what Damia did or whatever the the big ooze. So yeah, no, I mean I actually I, that's how I do a lot of my deck building. As some of you will uh, probably begrudgingly groan, I do build the deck first, right? Yeah. And that it does, and why you would groan is because there's a set of staple of cards that I like, <laughs> yeah. you know. And then, and I. Then, uh, <clears throat> I do that too. I don't do that every time. What about you, uh, Krim and uh, Tomer? Do you ever, do you always start with the commander and then build your deck? Or do you ever build the other way where you build the deck and you're like, oh, I'll just throw in whatever <laughs> in my colors? Deck first. Deck first and then trying to figure out what goes in there. Like for, for like, you know, uh, uh, like one of the, especially like Tomer week or something like that. If there's, or any, any, any of the weeks for anybody's dedicated to, right? I think about something specifically that the deck has to do. Yep. And then from that point on, with so many legendaries coming out every 30 seconds now, mm. there's going to eventually be one good enough for it. Either I'll just use the Grey Piper. The, yeah. the other cool part about it is it's really hard to switch your deck because it's 100 cards and it's really expensive. But your commander is just one card. So if you build a good deck and then you can just swap whatever commander you want on a week to week basis, like really easily and always have a fresh play experience. So I actually like building the, the other direction, too. I guess I'm, I, I would say... Oh, sorry. I would say commanders have kind of stifled people's creativity, especially with the way Wizards is doing it. Like, if you start with a commander, Wizards kind of shoehorns you into, like, a very specific mm -hmm. thing, right? Your commander does a very specific thing, and it's very obvious what kind of cards you need to add to your deck now. Uh, whereas if you start with a concept, like, I want to build a deck of many things deck or something, like, it's, like, wild, right? And then you build a deck, and then you're like, which commander fits this best? And then you add it. It's a lot different than if you're like, I'm playing Prosper, which, mm -hmm. you know, which cards should go in here? Yep. So I, 
maybe it's Wizards' fault for making these commanders like so specific and making the synergies like so brain dead obvious. But I, I kind of like the way we do it with Clash, where we start the theme mm-hmm. and we're like, okay, what's the deck that I want to build? And then we kind of go like, okay, what's the commander that actually helps me with this plan? So I, I kind of like that more, actually. Yeah, I, I think for Commander Clash in particular, because we always start with a theme, I think it's very natural for us to start with the 99 over the commander and then we select the commander that like fits the theme or helps the theme in some sort of way. And I think for me, like when I'm writing budget commanders, uh, I almost always start with the commander itself because I find building around the commander allows me to find cards that synergize with the commander and make cards, budget cards that are generally weaker than staples much better. And then I can replace the more expensive staples with these like synergy pieces that work really well with the commander. And it makes the deck stronger without having to rely on staples. And that's like a little cheat that I did for like, over a decade now of writing budget commanders. And that's why I was so it was commander specific, especially for budget decks. But I think most of my decks, or at least half of them is like, half of them is 99 focused. Like I wanted to build a Cauldre deck and I started with the Cauldre theme. And then I chose like, I chose what commander would fit best with it. And I've rotated with that. Or I made a six drop deck. Every single card is six mana value. I cho- I started with the theme first and then I picked the commander based on that. So I think it's 50-50. But like for budget decks in particular, I always start with the commander first. And that makes sense. Because in budget, you really need to like maximize every edge you can get. So maximizing the power of your card that you have access to every game definitely makes sense. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so these uh, these hills aren't so small. <laughs> We've gone very deep into these hills. <laughs> so we initially chose three hills to die. We're going to choose two hills to die on, boys. So this, uh, this last hill, make it count, Okay. Wait, wait, wait. I didn't even have a hill yet. Tomer, Tomer still needs a hill. Oh, well, I didn't even wait, have a oh, hill. Sorry. Oh, no, my bad. Bro. Oh, go, Tomer. <laughs> Get All right. your hill. All right. <laughs> Get your hill. Here's an easy one. Here's an easy one. This is this is the one that I feel like I'll die on and I'll I'll die happy. Flicking cards in com- in, in, in magic should be banned. <laughs> no. Oh, no. That's a hot Flicking cards would be banned. Boo. Oh, Boo. It's, not, it's, an, it's an annoying <laughs> habit. Nobody I else likes attacked. it. The only person who likes it is the person doing the flicking. It's annoying Trip for everybody like, else. Mars while we're podcasting. If you're in a tournament, I do. You should get a flicking cards. You should get a warning and then a you know. DQ. Because it's freaking annoying. It's also like it's a, as an editor, it's a nightmare to edit it out, especially if like we're all wearing lapel mics. I had to deal with that recently. <laughs> I'm not gonna name names, but we had yeah. to, we were all lapel mics and we had the, the the audio too high, so it was bleed. Everybody's <laughs> audio was bleeding into everything. Do you know how freaking long and time consuming it was to take out all the stupid <laughs> flicking sounds from other people's microphones, not just yours? <laughs> you mean like uh, it's like this? Well, you, uh, because... we should add it in. Actually, uh, it's actually iconic. I couldn't. Take- Part of magic. I couldn't take all of it out, and then and then some of the comments were like, "Yes, I like the flicking. These these yes these, yes. these weirdos yes. ASMR over ASMR. It's, it's, uh. it's like oh, uh, you ever like go to bed and there's like a light rain falling on your roof and it just like lures you off to sleep. It's like so perfect. That's a card <laughs> no. flicking to magic no. players. Like it's take it out. It's a positive. Like it's no. a comforting sound that people love. Yeah, oh, Tomer. Ugh, I yeah. feel personally I'm attacked. A... You're all attacked. Yeah, that's, I'm attacking that's everybody. Wild. I'm attacking the listeners. I'm attacking <laughs> all of you. It's not flicking cards. It's awful. Uh that that's gonna be hard to do. I mean, I do I do it so much that I've when I've gone on set to film uh, like and guests on other people's shows, they're like, All right, Krim, buddy, let's just put your hand down. Uh, and, and I'm like, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Like, this, this, is a, six, this is a sweaty 60 card holdover, right? So you, you have to flick your cards in tournament magic. Do you have to? Because, yes, because if you draw a card and you put it in like the leftmost slot of your hand or whatever, and then you play it, everyone knows exactly what you just drew. So tournament players will draw the card, shuffle their hand, and then play the card. Now you don't know if it came off the top or was always in their hand. So this is another remnant of sweaty 60 cardness. It has bled into every, like you play board games, you shuffle the cards, <laughs> you yeah. shuffle the cards. You, you do if a you... podcast, you shuffle the cards. Mm-hmm. I, I actually had to remove cards from my desk because I found myself shuffling them on podcasts as well. <laughs> I'm like, huh. this is all Kim's fault. <laughs> like, like... Oh, you do that? Okay. It, Wait, it's it's just habit. It's just habit. If so, you hand me anything, 
I shuffle it. You shuffle it. So yeah. I remember I, <laughs> I went to TwitchCon and I, you know, the people just hand me business cards. And I was like, oh, hey, how you doing? Thanks. All right, sure. And then I just, at the, the I go around the floor, and by the time I'm done, all the edges are worn. I've shuffled all their business cards. Good. I'm also the person where you don't give the receipt to. Like, oh, go, uh, pick up our food. Okay, sure. By the time I go up to the counter, the, 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 the receipt's already crumpled into oh, the small no. ball, and all the ink is somehow shuffled <laughs> off of it. Ooh, I have do you really not shuffle, Tover? Like, at all? Yeah, what do you do during the game with your hand? Yeah. Like, how, how do you, you sit there? perfectly still like i'm no, so confused I'm, look i have a, i i have the the itch like i have i have adhd <laughs> like if we go to like a restaurant for example and you know like they'll give you like a piece of like a paper in the straw like this the, the mm. paper will be ripped apart the napkin will be ripped apart like everything <laughs> will be ripped apart so for me what i do is i take my cards you see in my hand and i put mm -hmm. them on the i put them on the table i put them on the <laughs> table <laughs> And then I and then what? And then I but pick then them up what I need you just to just sit still oh. like a just... statue the whole time. You know who does that? <laughs> Aliens <laughs> yes. that, that are trying to pass off as human. <laughs> Hello, human. Hi, how are you? That's it, it, Man, that is... that's that's how you pass the human <laughs> test. Right? I'm just saying, you all wanted a hot take? There it is. Boom. You're all monsters and you know it. This is not a small hill. This is I, yeah. I feel personally attacked. I feel you're not imagining. That's a mountain. Yeah. <laughs> you're, I'm a mountain. Like, you're like a Yu-Gi-Oh player. Or something? I don't know what you are here. Like, who does a Yu-Gi-Oh players do it too? What are you talking about? Everybody does it. You're all it's a monster. Card game you're all monster. <laughs> I, I wanted. Wait, Seth. You know a lot of trivia. Who who invented this? Was there uh, like a Kibler. first person? <laughs> Brian Kibler. So yeah, Brian, Brian, Brian Kibler is one of the most famous ones, but I mean, he yeah. surely was not the first, right? I I do not know. I, I that would actually be interesting to research. I wonder if that's something you could figure out i bet it's just always been that way do you think you there's think... someone who invented card shuffling like the first yeah someone had it? to figure out that hey if i shuffle my hand i conceal more information i think it's just <laughs> like your players shuffle their hand no they don't touch that right they just leave it on the table yeah that's well true. i have bad news for you when when we went uh, like for the one of the few times i i went to vegas i definitely shuffled the hands that were dealt to me <laughs> and that was driving like... <laughs> people up a wall. <laughs> yeah, poker and poker talking... people would not be happy. <laughs> yeah, it might yeah, be a I natural human so tendency, long. like that you have to overcome. I feel like because I think it's like just it. like natural to fidget with the cards in your hand, like even I... outside of the competitive ramification. Because yeah. I never played tournament magic. Like I never was like going to pro tours and trying to like do it. I mostly played digitally, and I still just like out of habit. If I hold cards, I do it. Okay. Okay. The worst like cards. <laughs> Seth like Commander Clash. <laughs> like he spends all his time shuffling cards instead of highlighting cards. Like, and the comments no one can see his hand. It's section, digital. The comment section would be like, Seth, can you stop flicking your magic online cards? I'm like, ah! You can't cut dead time because there's so much motion going on because Seth keeps shuffling his hand. I can't help it. I can't help it. it. I can't help it. I don't. I, uh, I, I mean, look. I don't do it, but I. I get it. Yeah, I, I definitely do not shuffle yeah, my moto hand. That's, like that's an extreme I, I that I've never. That's an extreme I've never had. Like I can understand flicking your paper cards so that you need something to do with your hands, but flicking the magic online cards. Come on, come on. All right. <laughs> Uh, have you have you actually cast a spell on Arena by flicking your hand? <laughs> yes, a couple of times. <laughs> it has <laughs> happened. It has happened. <laughs> oh god. Uh... Okay. Now we are on the final round. We did it. <laughs> that was an important hill. Good thing we didn't miss that one. Otherwise, there might be new players that don't shuffle their hands. That's disgusting. <laughs> if you want to be accepted, start practicing. <laughs> you don't you don't want to be the guy that can't actually shuffle and they go and they shuffle and they spill all the cards on the table. You mean Seth? Oh, that's me. I can't shuffle. <laughs> that's literally I can't shuffle Seth. My library. <laughs> I've well, improved. Oh. I've imp I've improved. Oh, I've never had more anxiety than w watching someone shuffle than watching Seth shuffle. I <laughs> oh, feel like oh, Seth cannot shuffle a deck. He can <laughs> shuffle a hand. <laughs> he shuffles the hand, but like watching him shuffle a deck is probably one of the most like if you ever go to a magic puts con the or you see down, Seth, so half the cards are right side up and up. It doesn't even make any yeah. sense. You get DQ'd for that at a tournament. <laughs> oops, uh, I didn't realize it was. But that, that bad. is what happens, and Seth does go oops like all the time, right? Like. Oh, I just so it's starting to feel like an intervention. <laughs> I just want to watch really good. And, uh, I don't think we have to record it. The, the peak was the first magic 
con we went to, and then se- someone someone was like, "Seth, play some vintage with us." Oh, so God. he's handed this like Tower Nine. Oh, I was there. For that. See, I can see him sweating. His, yeah, his oh hands my God, were shaking. <laughs> and I, honestly, like I understand that. Like this was first time handling paper cards. Yeah, yeah. I never like, played paper magic, and it's like here, here's this thirty thousand dollar vintage deck. Shuffle yeah. this up. Let's play. Look, oh, this is more expensive than your car. Please yes. shuffle it up. <laughs> it went okay though. I don't think I destroyed anything, so it worked out in the end. But I was so nervous. <laughs> All right, we need to move on from the shuffling podcast. This this should make a comeback as uh, <laughs> as the shuffling podcast. <laughs> Here's my here's my next hot take. Planeswalkers suck, and they need to be reworked for Commander. Ooh. So, nah. uh, Wizards has screwed the, screwed this up, right? So, Wizards made Planeswalkers as the face characters of Magic: The Gathering. They made a whole new type: Jace, the Mind Sculptor, the the Lorwyn Five, or whatever, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And in, in in this day and age. We don't even care about those planeswalkers. Who who are you running? Oh, I'm running. Uh, I'm running Omnath. I'm running. Uh, I'm running Nickel Bolt. Nickel Bolt is actually a planeswalker and a card. Yeah. Uh, but planeswalkers are largely irrelevant. They don't head your commander deck, which is actually the most important and uh, most obvious talking point. Yeah. They also just suck in the format. <laughs> like you, you cannot with a straight face play like 99% of planeswalkers outside of trying to cheese the win with doubling season super friends. Yeah. They need to be reworked. Like, we should be playing Chandra versus Nissa versus Garrick or whatever, and not, I can't even think of random one of 10,000 legendaries they released this year, right? Like, what happened to the face cards? What happened to the Jace redemption arc and Gideon and whatever? Like, they, it's terrible. They, it's terrible. They got to fix it. Watsi, I think Watsi agreed with you, but instead of trying to fix them, maybe because they couldn't figure out a way to fix them, they're just like, we'll just get rid of them. We'll just make them all legendary creatures. So I just desparked oh. everything. Yeah. Wait, they have, who have they yeah, desparked? They, they, they desparked all like, of the main ones. Like every, pretty everyone. much everyone. We only get one planeswalker a set yeah. now. They, they desparked all the planeswalkers. Plane yeah, but I don't have a Liliana legendary card outside the the healer one. Oh, it'll be right. it'll be coming. It'll be coming. Let's just she start it. So I think that's the their part. plan is to like just minimize planeswalkers and make them legends now. Because the challenge is like, how would you do it, Richard? That's the hard part. Because like the inherent it's issue hairy. with planeswalkers is you have three opponents that can attack them. I don't know how you solve that. Is it just, just like a, make them a creature their... with four tap abilities? <laughs> <laughs> they were moving okay. in the right direction though. Yeah. Right, like with like example, like Teferi, Master of Time. That's the one being able to activate on each other person's turn. Right, they were moving in the right direction, then they just kind of stopped working towards it. Yeah. I would say the wa- the the whatever the Eternal Wanderer, the passive kind of does make it so that it's a little bit easier at protecting itself. Uh so yeah, like I I don't know. I mean I. I thought they would kind of just keep moving in that direction, but still, so far, no big strides, just little steps. I think, like, you have to make it, you have to make it work better in multiplayer while not making it oppressive in single player. And I guess they could do that by making planeswalkers of new abilities like the fairy that just skirt past, you know, like modern or standard or scale up with multiplayer. I think the fairy was a great example of that, where the the reason to fairy master of time works so well multiplayer is you can activate loyalty abilities of it on every single person's turn. So it actually scales up on multiplayer while being fine in 1v1, which I think is it was a very smart way. But like, I don't know. Planeswalkers had that inherent drawback of like, they can be removed by combat damage, so you don't have to use interaction. You don't have to use a spell from your hand to get rid of them. And you got three opponents instead of one. So it's like, yeah, I don't know. Would don't would know. you be happy, Richard, if you started getting like Liliana legendary creatures? Would that scratch the itch of like you just want the characters? Yes. Basically, it doesn't yeah. it doesn't have to be a planeswalker the card. Most the iconic characters. characters and the one that theoretically the stories revolve upon because yeah. these characters can jump planes and whatever. I have no commander decks for. I can't <laughs> build any commander decks. That is, and it's not happening in the foreseeable future. And like just tacking on the Teferi ability of activate every turn is like stupid. I yeah. Think. Like what? What? If, like you're what like, oh, features we're... suck. Let's just make them all have flash. I'm like, I don't know. You got to <laughs> rework the type or something, right? Like you can't just like randomly change it. Look, I would rework the type, kind of like how they redid Companion or something. Like just like fix it all together in some multiplayer way. They they tried doing it with um, Brawl. 
right? They're like, oh, your planeswalker can be the, the head of your thing. And they, they've tried it in like one ofs. Like some of the yeah. pre-constructed deck commanders can be used as your commander, but they still suck <laughs> uh, because they die super easy. And also there's so much removal. Uh, even in 60 card formats, planeswalkers suck, right? Because yeah. people just like Shieldrix Edict. So, sorry, nice clean answer, right? Uh, so I don't know. They kind of suck for being the face card. So I what want if, what to be if, excited for a new Liliana. What if they had, what if like a planeswalker ability would be like, uh, they can't lose more than like one loyalty on your opponent's turns? Yeah, I like that. Right? Like it lowers the loyalty, it, it, it can be applied to just met, like multiplayer. I think that'd be probably kind of cool. I mean, you still lose three loyalty on a turn cycle, though. If sure. <laughs> but like, just like picks at you. But that's fine, right? Because, like, as opposed to now, where there's just not even a chance. I think that at least makes it so they're a little stickier, and this means that you, your pluses, it, like if you're if you're already starting at three loyalty and you plus one, that's a lot, right? Now, now that means that this is a whole turn cycle. I, I the one thing that I don't like about planeswalkers though is like I would love to see more planeswalkers being peppered into decks, but I really don't want super friends to get any more ammo, and I don't want them to be more of a dominant archetype than they are mm -hmm. because. I feel like one big thing for casual commander is time equity. And if if one deck takes a lot of a lot more time than everybody else at the table, it's very boring for everybody else because everybody else is just waiting to do something. And it really sucks watching a person play the game of magic while you are a bystander. And super friends do, decks do that. All the time. If they're allowed, that's, if they're allowed, they're to really get off weird, the Calmer. Why? It's really weird. <laughs> yeah. That you would you would put super friends on blast. Yeah. yeah. Don't what. What's that thing that uh they they the they usually artifacts? No. Are they? Yeah, yeah. So, that's that's called uh. That's oh, called yeah, fair no, magic. Yeah. That's called fair so, magic. Oh, that's fair <laughs> magic. Okay, hold on. Let watch. I'm gonna float some infinite mana. I'm gonna draw my whole deck. Uh, I'm gonna recur this. I'm gonna present the loop with scrap worker. Oh, it's better. It's uh, better than I I go infinite mana and I win the game. Then be like, um. We, oh gonna, no! Which they don't win the game. Plus They're like, hold two on, this or am I gonna negative gonna put three this, this? together? Am I gonna draw <laughs> I a card this. and scry one, or am I gonna? <laughs> yeah. Am I gonna yeah. do three damage to this thing? It's just like all these like little meaningless little choices, and you're like debating between one or the other, and it's just like so freaking boring. Just like, figure it out. All right, go ahead. How you know what the that, worst thing about planeswalkers that? is? Statics. So not only are you doing all of this. But you're like, actually, uh, rewind four steps. Uh, there's yeah. a static here. You, uh, yeah, you, you shouldn't can't have been able draw to do that. more than one card. Uh, thing. Oh. And then Grist is a creature in my library for some reason just to add yeah. complexity. Uh, yeah, it's just, yeah. Can you imagine if every Planeswalker was to fairy? That would be oh. awful. Like, oh. Okay, so on yeah. my turn, I'm going to do five different things. And then on your turn, I'm going to do six different things. And it's like, no. Stop! Let me I don't play. understand how that's any different than an artifact deck or an enchantress <laughs> deck. To be to be honest with you, right? Artifact like... decks never did anything wrong. All right, leave me alone. The, okay. <laughs> the, I, all right. My equipment deck is not an artifact deck, by the way. It's an equipment deck. Anyway. All right, all right, Krim, uh, hit us with another molehill. <laughs> I, you know, it's so funny, Richard, that you you also mention that you can't build these decks that you like uh, of these cards, you know, around face cards, right? But what if I told you that I think one step farther, magic needs its TV show. Magic needs its anime. Magic needs its animated show. I don't care if it's anime style. I don't care, you know, how you do it right now. Just give a good way for people to still be involved in the world of magic, right? Mm -hmm. and like, let's say if I, I want I want to be involved with magic but not play the game for the day. I just want to have a lazy day. This allows me to still do that. You had Arcane, which was amazing, right? It, it, it made me even care about the world that League was in, and I don't care about that world. So, like, Castlevania, wonderful anime, made me want to actually go back and play the games, you know? Cyberpunk single-handedly had a resurrection in its player base. Magic has now, by this point, just not put out a TV show. And it was rumored to have come out a long time ago. I think it was like 2012 was when it was supposed to hit. We are a little bit farther than 2012. Uh, and, and, and don't just put one out that sucks. Like, you, you, like, I'm talking like invest in real writers and like actually have a storyboarded game plan. Uh, and, and like, yeah, like they, they, they do all these wonderful shorts with big name anime studios, right? You had Studio Wit. You know, you had all of that. 
and, and they have these wonderful studios that work on it. And that the, we just we have this two minute short. I think that if you had a world that people like characters they can latch on to, they care about the show more. You want to talk about lore? You want to talk about a stronger IP? That's how you do it. There's a reason why Yu Gi Oh! I'm Pokemon hiring you go. as head of WotC yeah. animated TV show. <laughs> Done. Who, who, what, what is like the general plot and who are the main characters? Because we just talked about how you can't even play Jace. Uh, as a J stack, do we do we still throw the Lorwyn Five as the main characters? Is it? I don't know. It's supposed to be Sean random Gar, right? leaders. What do you What do you like about like the Star Wars movies, all that stuff? You don't care for Luke too much. You care. You love the cast around Luke, right? So all you Who's do the cast is, around Jace. Wookies. You, okay, yeah. well. <laughs> so you make you make the the Ewoks. Ewoks, you make yes. the, the the great watch the bit the original five right they're the team right and then you make a new character that like because it's not that hard it's not unheard of in the world of magic that a new planeswalker just pops up out of nowhere right so you just make a new character and you have the original five show up here and there uh and then you just have that like them being the supporting cast that everyone loves and then you have a main character that isn't like the worst, but also just like, you know, not ju just enough, right? To where you can latch on to and you enjoy it. Also, anime already does that, you know, the happy-go-lucky lead. You know, you have Naruto, you have Tanjiro, you have all these characters that are just like, they're unnatural, they are so shallow, yet so, like, like there's not a lot of depth to them, mm -hmm. but you love them anyways because they're so damn sweet. And like, 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 they're so hilariously simple and kind. So you just do that. And you just follow that world. And it's even easier when you have multiple planes. Yes. That's like 50 million seasons. You explain the the word, like the simple methods of like, you know, plane chasing or plane traveling and all of that. And that gives you the the opportunity to be like, well, season three is cowboy time. Mm -hmm. All right. And and maybe and you don't even have to do that. They don't even it could be like a black mirror thing. They don't even have to feed into the next season. Every season could be like a true detective thing, a Black Mirror thing. No continuity, just it's an isolated season. I feel like I, I, I agree with Krim. I think this is the single most important thing for Wizzicus to do right and, and get done because it would bring in so many more casual fans into the audience. And I see like D&D, for example, terrible sales for their books. But what propped them up this year was Baldur's Gate 3 smashing it, bringing so many new eyeballs, so many new fans uh, to the genre. It's enormous. And then we see Arcane and everything. I, I agree. Like, this is this probably has this should be a top priority to get it done and get it right. I, I think I would yeah. do something like I would take like Sh I think Chandra is like a good shonen protagonist. Like, she's like very emotional. She just solves things with big fireballs and stuff like that. That would be super sweet. And I'd probably have like the first episode be her doing like uh, the she had to do a heist to steal like some sacred scrolls to like free Ugin's prison, and do the whole thing. It was like leading up to the War of the Spark. And you could like have her do a cool action scene at the beginning. And then you can uh, like uh, cut to, you know, her growing up and how her spark. Uh, how, how her planeswalker sparked and everything and she was like jumping from planes and everything and it would be super fun it could be like a heist episode and everything I don't know it could be it could be super fun and you just have like a character who's like kind of learning about the world and everything because she just had a spark she doesn't know what's going on and she's finding herself in a new world and other planeswalkers interact with her and explain to her the rules of, of planeswalking and this is the multiverse this is how everything works and I think that would be great because it would be good uh, what's it called foster person for the audience because the audience doesn't know what a planeswalker is or anything so just have a person a new planeswalker have them spark and everything be that could be chandra or anybody else and then be explained what these laws are of this universe by other planeswalkers who are more seasoned and everything that they encounter and stuff i don't know when, it, when the it, russo it, brothers were originally announced as the uh, like the direction for that show chandra was actually on the promo art yeah. it's a it's a nice thought but Maybe instead you just like, I don't know. There's some very popular movies out there, like Marvel movies, Lord of the Rings movies. What if instead of trying to do something you're really bad at, like which is anything except making magic cards, like making a huge hit TV show, what if you just paid them and made magic cards of their movies and claim them as your own? Like, isn't, ah, isn't that oh, where we're going? Ah. Like, isn't Lord of the Rings a magic movie? Isn't like X-Men a magic movie now? Like, I don't know. 
I think you but do that's both. Like, I think you do both, right? Like, I think you can still have the universes beyond, but also do, like, you, you know, you, you do a little bit of, a, like, a, a pleasing everybody there, right? It's, it's like in comic book movies, you do enough to where it's new, it's different, so that the comic book readers aren't just completely bored out of their mind. They know everything. You keep them just on their toes, but you also make it good enough to where everybody, uh, like, you know, just kind of something for everybody. So I think you do both. Uh, I, I know that uh, Hasbro and all of them are very, very bad at making decisions, uh, or like top down as a, so like this is going to be hard for them to grasp. But if you actually make a good show and you care and you put money into it, like Tomer said, so, you'll have a so casual they made viewer D&D base. the movie, and it was very well received. It was actually a yeah. pretty fun yeah. movie. They theoretically could do it. I think they have missed their opportunity. So, like, the, the plot line you and Tomer are describing, it's basically a superhero movie. Yeah. And we are in, we're in superhero fatigue right now, right? Like, Marvel is slumping. Like, people are just, like, done with, like, this thing as a concept. I think you got to go, like, really solid story that's just slightly magic. Like, I don't know, like Joker or something like that, right? Like, it's like a very dark, gritty movie. And there's like some superhero aspects, but those are kind of to the side versus like Avengers Endgame type thing. Because I think we're burnt out on that. And if Wizards had released this like four years ago at the peak of like superhero stuff, then yeah, it would have been great, right? But now everyone's just like, eh, whatever, right? So it's got to be like a a really cool thing. Like, I still think Brothers War is some of the best story that they've ever done. But unfortunately, those are not characters they want to sell. Right? So, two you know, old, not... Two old men yelling at <laughs> but, each other. <laughs> <laughs> but, but like, if... that, that was, like, a real, <laughs> like, like, fun story that was kind of, like, you know, it's not like I'm throwing fireballs for the sake of selling fireballs. It was actually, like, a fantasy story that was happening, right? So, I don't know. They, they can do it. Hopefully, they do do it. Because Dungeons and Dragons happened, uh, but remember the first Dungeons and Dragons movie is a travesty. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right? well, so, uh... also the latest one did very badly in terms of sales, and I think it's mostly because they put it right beside Mario the movie, which was not correct. Don't do that. Mario, Mario is a good example of a mediocre movie that did so well. Oh, yeah, because like the IP is so loved, and you right? take it, but you it take like, your objectively kids. kind of like a sussy movie, but it still did super well. So. If you have a child, there. if you have a child of a certain age, you, you're obligated to take him to the the Mario movie, right? Like that's a requirement. Yeah, like uh, 35 plus, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Seth, hit us, hit us, hit us with a oh. with a hot take. Okay, this this one. No big deal. Super easy, although it might be a little controversial. So Commander is the most popular format of Magic right now, right? Like, that's where most people are playing the game. I think we should retcon some older cards to make them work in the format. And I know some people are going to be upset because we shouldn't errata cards or change cards. But honestly, here's what I'm thinking example-wise. What about, like, Brothers Yamazaki? Like, mm -hmm. they really should be partnered. These cards see zero play in any format other than commander and even in commander they really don't see any play but they would be so perfect as a partner pair for commander like flavor wise what's the harm in just sticking partner on there just being like hey guess what we decided they're actually partner or another example we played nephilim week on commander clash last year what's the harm with just sticking <laughs> legendary on the nephilim outside of whatever one tomer played in combat <laughs> maybe, 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 yeah. maybe that one I maybe approve. that one shouldn't be give me the nephilim <laughs> like they don't see any play outside of commander so why not make him work in commander or an even better example what about sarah send it it's formatted in a way that makes it clunky and broken and unintended in commander what if you just made it work the right way with the modern wording instead of the old way like what's the harm in this like we have unreadable cards uh, every day with secret layers it's not like there's some uh, like you know <laughs> something about being able to read the cards that's super important in 2023 so like is there really any reason not to do this at this point we have erratas the companion doesn't work the way it plays there's misprints why not why not just make these cards work the best way they can in magic's most popular format i would be very against this because it's like I think erratas happen usually to fix mistakes. Well, I guess the dinosaur, like some lizards are became into dinosaurs. But like, I don't know, turning a, just going like errata happy really makes me get a lot of alchemy vibes. And I don't like mm -hmm. that. I don't like that at okay. all. Already there. Yeah. I whenever but... I play my Baragon deck, I play Soul Warden. And it's like, it says summon cleric. But guys, it's actually summon human cleric. And this picture... That would be, a human, that would right? be for humans. Or like the though. Phyrexians. 
uh, you know, where they just added for you know, like half the cards. Yeah. Like they go back yeah. and add creature types and change creature types uh, with gusto. <laughs> so why? What like if we just that. add like if we just add partner to Brothers Yamazaki? I think this is the first real molehill. Who would care outside like, the five <laughs> Brothers Yamazaki players? <laughs> yeah. and you'll never see them in your life, and like no one will actually see or care about this. I feel like the Nephilim would be very popular, especially Ink Treader, because Ink Treader is a little bit cracked. <laughs> I'm a little worried that that one could be too strong after how it performed for you, but like, no, it's fine. I don't Give know. Me that. It, I'm down. It seems <laughs> it, to me, it seems like it's, it would be worth it. I would be on board with that. Like, I think that would be cool. I don't know. There's probably some other examples. Those were the three that I thought of like most obviously, but I don't want to, you don't got to do it with every card. You don't got to just, you know, master out of everything. But in these, some case, there's certain cases where it's just like such a perfect flavor. When I'm sure there's some other like partner pairings from the past, so, like cards that were printed before partner was a thing that would just be so perfect and so unproblematic to be partners gameplay wise why not like i don't know commander's the thing now embrace it it's such a can of worms though because then there's going to be such like like it's such a slippery slope because it's like okay so you made these things around it but what about this 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 well uh there was like these uh cons of tarkir a cycle of like they're monocolor but then they have hybrid casting thingies and everybody's like oh i want soul fire grandmaster as a legendary why isn't that a legendary wizards and there's just gonna be like just chaos on everybody wanting everything to be legendary everything has to be a commander now i don't know i i don't like it i don't like it <laughs> also it's a casual format i think if you showed up with a brother's yamazaki deck and said this has partnered with the, the other one literal zero people would object yeah <laughs> that's true <laughs> let, me but, read the, uh, let me read the card okay yeah i don't care you that, want like four yamazakis in your deck this is how we got acorn <laughs> symbols by the way we got this acorn <laughs> bullshit no, no acorn nonsense i mean Realist. that's that's true but one thing i've learned is like People just don't want to do that. There's a really big barrier for a lot of people that, like, if you're playing with random people at a Magic Con, you don't want to have to have that conversation. So people just avoid it altogether. That's yeah. why we don't see yeah. Acorn cards. We don't see more Rule Zero stuff because it's just easier to, like, play something legal and not have to do that with a bunch of strangers. So it sounds nice in theory, but in practice, a lot of people just aren't comfortable being like, hey, here's my, like, Rule Zero deck. It's not a problem, but, like, so... I don't know. I don't think that actually solves it, unfortunately. But what do you think, Grim? Arata away? I <laughs> I think that we already kind of have done it. But, like, I do agree. I'm, like, somewhere in between because I also think that it only should be to fix something, right? Like, an actually, like, the big red button. Uh, and I don't think it should just be, like, like they, they could just print a partner pairing of Brothers Yamazaki if it were that in demand, right? They could just print that. But like once you just start errataing things like left and right, then you kind of deal with also like the Yu-Gi-Oh problem. This does not function the way it should. Like the way you're, I know you're reading it, but that's not actually <laughs> what it does. Aren't we already like, there though? Like, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I haven't read don't we already have that what problem? Does it even matter at this point? Do we want to make I mean, it worse? I don't. <laughs> yeah, like I, I, I think you don't want to make it worse. That's for sure. Like yes, you could do that, but what are you doing but just making it worse? And I don't think you should do that at all. So. I, I think this is specifically for just fixes that need to happen. All right. Tomer, close us out with the last molehill. Okay. I'm gonna upset a lot of <laughs> a lot of commander players in particular here with nice expensive decks. And I'm gonna tell you that double sleeving is a scam. All right? Hey. Double sleeving. It's Amen. Scam. <laughs> and all it does is it bulks up your stupid decks that are already way too big, and then it, it you're, you know you all this beautiful bling stuff that you have. It's gonna be less shiny because you've double sleeved it. It's like it's like you bought like a real is you, you know like how like grandparents and stuff. I don't know in your household or not, but like I had grandparents who they had like really nice leather sofas and everything, and they'd put like this awful plastic on top of it, <laughs> so it would never be ruined, never. And they'd have it for like decades. And yeah, I'm sure I'm sure it's in a pristine condition. I still got the plastic bill of my TV. <laughs> oh God, brightness by half. Oh, oh my. my. The God, purpose Richard, of it will always why? be pristine, but it will always be hideous. I'm joking, by the way. That's what my parents did. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what my grandparents said. And like, it's always going to be pristine in theory, but you're never going to appreciate it. It's always going to look hideous because it's covered in this extra layer of plastic, and it just looks worse. This, this and is why? A problem for the what? People that cannot shuffle their. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> you have never sat at a table with a drink. Because the time double sleeving actually saves you is when someone spills that drink. And you know there's always some <laughs> idiot that brings the drink. And I go, oh, I'll be careful, guys. Don't worry. It's a, there's a lid and it seals and whatever. <laughs> and three seconds later, it's all over the place. Double sleeving saves you from that. Uh, remember the Magicon where Seth was going to go to a cube? And yeah. the cube was ruined? Yes. <laughs> yes. What? Yes, I do remember. what? Well, I think that was ruined but by some, someone, someone throwing throw up, up on it. Yeah, I think oh. someone threw but up But if it was double sleeve, but... it would have been safe. It would have been safe. Wait, did it, did it Did it? actually ruin? Because I've had single sleeves, and some people have had like a spill or whatever, and never have my uh, cards ever been effective, and they're always single sleeve. Always. I don't I, think that's physically sound. There's a there's a gap does, that water. Yeah, but I, like I if you have that if you have that extra oomph, you have that extra cushion on it. Well, like um, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I, if you have extra cushion on your sleeves, is what I'm saying. Is uh, you'll you'll they'll usually tight enough that yeah, it doesn't matter. Does double sleeving actually make a difference? Like, is it? We I need a short on this or a video on this. I want to see someone take their double sleeve deck out and just dump a soda on their table. Like, ask what those cars look like. I don't know if I believe it. I don't know if I believe it. Like up his alley, yeah. just like <laughs> the, the get nine black lotuses. Okay, we yeah. need it for the thumbnail. The professor's like, <laughs> and then start dunking <laughs> yeah. drinks on them. The professor will literally <laughs> take like he'll triple sleeve cards and be like, oh look how waterproof it. And he'll take it and he'll throw it in a water bowl in a water tank. It's like, see <laughs> now if your now if your cards fall into a water tank they'll be fine it's like well i've never had that situation brian i'm sorry i have it single sleeve i've never had an issue i have tiny hands shuffling 100 card single sleeve decks is already a pain you think i'm going to shuffle double sleeve get out of here no absolutely not I, get out of here i never had a problem i'm a tomer Decade. Double sleeving is like, it's like Valentine's Day. It's one of those things that's just made up by the big corporations to try to get a little bit more of our money. Everybody has this <laughs> hypothetical. are in shambles. Everybody has yeah. this quadruple sleeve. <laughs> hypothetical like, sleeves. <laughs> I mean, We're sleeves change are Change after but... every round. You want to make sure they're pristine. What, what are these the like, duality? people are just like constantly <laughs> throwing jugs of water okay. onto your table? Like, I've never, I've never had this issue in decades of Krim play. plays with the most expensive cards. Okay. Krim always has foil anime this foil yeah. anime that do you double sleeve or not Krim? not at all i actually <laughs> I actively i take off my double sleeve i used to and then i just remove them now uh i i, I do not and I, I think that double sleeving is pointless the, the, the dualities of a card game player that are unreal because you have the the there's like just first off there's no sleeves then there's just single sleeve but then you have like the quadruple sleeve, like they have the art sleeve and they have the outer sleeve and the outer sleeve for the outer sleeve. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I'm like, it's like <laughs> there's, there's that one that in the binder at that point. Like, what's going on here? Do you remember the SCG grinder that would play like a extra turns deck and he like quadruple I remember or that. something? He would just I show remember up this that. huge pile of cards yeah. every event with his turns deck. Honestly, you can never be too safe. <laughs> honestly, I think Richard's probably right. I think for me, it's actually just like twice as much sleeving time. That's my biggest issue. I would probably double sleeve if it was just as easy as single sleeving, but I don't know if it's so like I, worth that time. I also time. don't double sleeve anymore. But when, when I was a sweaty F&M grinder, double sleeve, right? Because, uh... I mean, that drinks, helps drinks happen, curling. Even though there are explicit rules in the LGS <laughs> for no drinks, or if you're playing on like a grimy bar table or something. But also, when you single sleeve, sometimes the, the cards ride up, right? And sometimes they ride up to the like very edge of the sleeve, and they'll they'll get nicked if you shuffle a lot. Uh, sometimes you get the Seth. Maybe you've had this. You do the terrible shuffle where like a sleeve goes into a, another sleeve. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know times. what I mean? <laughs> a few times. Yep, I've done. That. Like sometimes that happens, so that protects against <laughs> that. So if, if I were playing with like Dockside Extortionists and uh, Jewel Lotuses and original Dual Lands, yes, I will double sleeve. But I, I I don't, so I don't double sleeve. But there is merit to the protection. And it's not the shuffling that gets me. It's the double sleeving of every common to make your deck uniform. Yeah. Like, I, I can suffer double sleeving my, my dual land. But then I got to double sleeve, like, the stupid two-cent <laughs> card so I don't get accused of cheating. <laughs> and then I got to spend all that time doing it. So I, I'm lazy. I don't do Oh, it. God. Is that cheating? I'm pretty sure I have some decks that have some, yes. some non-double sleeves in there just because the cards came uh, in the, in the inner have, sleeve and I didn't want to take them get, out. people like, get, DQ'd for cheating because, like, there is a scratch that goes right instead of left on their sleeve, right? Yeah. Mark, imagine Mark, if, dude. like Mark. Imagine Mark. if your Tron lands were double sleeved and nothing else was. <laughs>
Yeah, that would be suspicious. And I have Blink decks too. Like my Changeling deck is almost all fully foiled, and it's not like cheap foils too. And single I've sleeve Priest of Titania. Yeah, I've had it single sleeve all is the time. Is your fan gifted Apex Swap single sleeve? Of course, it's my Tashiro right. deck, and it's single sleeved, obviously. <laughs> And like uh, <laughs> my my culture deck has like sort of Fuse and Fireman, uh, Kaladesh mm. masterpiece, right? Like, yeah, it's single sleeve. It's fine. It's always been like all these cards have always been fine. I've never had an issue since like 2011. Since I've been playing Commander since 2011, <laughs> and yet everybody's like, oh well, but but recently people spilled jugs of water on their <laughs> play, playing battles. <laughs> what? Get better friends. I don't understand. It's, it's, it's like insurance, friends. right? 99.9% of the time, you do not need it. Yeah. But that, like, 0.1% of the time where you need it, you're like, oh, thank goodness I have insurance. It's like the ugly right? sheen of plastic that our grandparents would put on all their, <laughs> on our couches. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe one time somebody spills, like, wine on it, right? And that would suck, <laughs> wouldn't it? Well, it's like, well, just don't bring wine to your couch if you're, such a, if you're so worried about that stuff, you know? <laughs> Uh, all right, that's uh, that's it. I'm actually curious if you <laughs> double sleeve, uh, because it does make your deck considerably thicker in commander, right? And it, because not only like because it adds like air bubbles or whatever, right? So then it, like it, it actually starts getting thicker. So do people actually double sleeve? And it makes foils I uglier guess. too. I'm sorry, people with double sleeves, but take it out and, <laughs> and check the foils, and you'll be like, wow, this looks so much prettier for some but, reason. But it straightens your foils because the thickness of mm. the plastic keeps them from like curling. Get your that was printers. why you did them when you were you were playing like in sweaty formats right yeah. so that you couldn't have a curled card yeah. you got to play around yeah. watsi yeah. and they're printing yeah <laughs> yeah european cards <laughs> or or oh, yeah. wait so you play flip cards and you take them out of the sleeve and they're naked for like <laughs> 20 seconds oh. they're breathing the air yeah. no no, no. Exposed. <laughs> for, that, that freedom for double oh, sleeves boy. i actually leave them out and i have them in a in a like a tight sealed inner sleeve thingy and i have yeah. like the, the proxy thing inside the my actual deck so when i take it out i bring out from my sideboard the card already sleeved well all right so next time you play the commander clash crew bring a lot of drinks to <laughs> still fear it because apparently <laughs> bring it that's not the reckless takeaway. we're like eh, whatever that is bring not it. the takeaway <laughs> that's the takeaway <laughs> that's the takeaway uh so yeah let us know what the smallest hill you're willing to die for? Uh, I'm curious. We we got a lot. Of, we got a lot of hills. Some of them maybe not so small today, but some uh, pretty small. Uh, I'm curious about double sleeving. I I think most people, if I remember at MagicCon, do not double sleeve based on the size of their decks. Rightfully uh, so. But yeah, well, I, I'm curious. Uh, let us know in the comments, and we'll see you here back next week.